Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs and in this video, we are doing a quick pattern review for dress number three in the battle of the shirt dress. Yes, this is the third showing for the battle of the shirt dress and I only have one more dress done, well, that I need to do. Um, it's not done yet, but the last one is simplicity. So this one that I created is a new look pattern and the pattern is new look 6180. All right. Now, before we get started, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell. So we, you are notified every time I upload a new video. So without further ado, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get into the pattern review. And then I want to do a roundup of everything that I did for me, May, May. So this is a two part, but this video will go relatively quick. All right. So let's go ahead and get into the pattern description for the uh, shirt dress, which is new look 6180. All right. So for the pattern description, this pattern is a Mrs. Retro style dress that has two length variation. You have a shorter one to your knees and then a longer view as well. It has buttons along the front, which is four. It also has an elastic waistband. For the sleeves, it has a sleeveless version. It also has a short sleeve version and then a three fourth length sleeve as well. It also has a full skirt and it also includes a tight belt. All right, so that is the pattern description for this pattern. Let's go ahead and move over to the skill levels. So for the skill level for this pattern, I'm gonna say it's an intermediate beginner. A beginner can do it, but I feel that this pattern, the way that you attach your facing is not what you would normally do for a shirt dress pattern, okay? So um, it's more like what you would do for a raglan sleeve style dress. So that's why I will not say that this is extremely beginner friendly. You need some, um, you know, you need to know some of the terminologies that's in those instructions. Okay. So I'm going to say that this is an intermediate beginner pattern. Let's move over to notions. So the notions used for this pattern is you need a pack of a fourth inch wide elastic, and you also need four, half inch buttons. Okay. Now I use three fourth inch buttons simply because I wanted to use the buttons that was in my stash and it was three fourth inch buttons instead of a half an inch buttons. And it worked perfectly well. I think it looks amazing. Okay. If I do say so myself. All right. So let's go ahead and move over to the pattern pieces. All right. So for the pattern pieces, I'm going to go ahead and take the instructions out. And for the pattern pieces, I use, all of them except for pattern piece number 11. Okay, so I did view A, so I used the front, the back, the yoke front, the yoke back, front facing, collar, neck band, the sleeves, and then pattern piece number nine is the skirt front and back, so you need to cut two on the fold of the fabric there. You also have the buttonhole guide as well, and then pattern piece number 12 is the tie belt that I did not use. So I used the total of nine pattern pieces plus the, boat, the buttonhole guide. So those are all the pattern pieces that I used for this pattern. Let's go ahead and talk about pattern sizing. Okay. So this pattern comes in one size and it's 10 to 22. The size that I cut was a size 14. Now I was a little on the fence with cutting a size 14 simply because in patterns, I normally cut anywhere from a 16 to an 18. I don't remember cutting a 14 from the bus all the way down. Like I did not have to grade or any of that stuff. Um, for this pattern, which is different because new look normally runs small. And this is an older pattern from pre spring 2013. So I was a little nervous about sewing it because I did not do a test muslin. I just went with my gut and cut the 14 and it fits perfectly. All right. So that is the, uh, pattern sizing. The pattern size that I cut, like I said, was a size 14. All right. So let's talk about modifications. Did I make any modification? 
surely I did. Okay. So I made a few, I won't even say a few. I made quite a bit of modifications. First modification, I added a slit sleeve. Okay. So I used the sleeve pattern for a new look 6180, the original pattern. So I actually cut the size A, which is the shorter sleeves. However, I then lengthen it. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy. I lengthen it to have a sleeve of the three fourth inch sleeve. So what I would suggest is to cut at that three fourth inch sleeve um, line, which is view A, right? Instead of cutting the short sleeves like I did for view B. All right. So do that. And then you're going to make a line all the way up the center of it, cut it at five eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then I made some drawstrings. What you can do is if you go to Mimi G's video for slit sleeve, she walk you through how to do it. That's pretty much the same way that I did it. I just made my ties a little longer. I made my ties at 16 inches long instead of 11 like Mimi does in her slit sleeve video, which I will link to on the end screen and also put the link in the description box below. So that was one of the first things that I did make this a slit sleeve. The second thing that I did was I added pockets. Now it does come with a pocket pattern piece, um, but the pocket is, I believe, view D. Um, I didn't like those pockets that's there. Um, so I used the pockets that are bigger from Simplicity 9041 and it worked beautiful and perfectly simply because I made Simplicity 9041, which I do have a sew along for on the channel. I will also link to it on the end screen and in the description box below. I also did my own tie belt. I did not use the tie belt in the pattern instruction. Reason being is because I wanted the tie belts to be long to where I could wrap it around the back, come back to the front and then make a bow, which is what I did. The tie belt is also from Simplicity 9041. When I uh, put the dress on a few days ago to take pictures for hashtag me may me, I noticed that I could wrap it around my waist three times and still create a bow. And I wanted that same look on this dress. So I just pulled out those pattern pieces, the pockets and the tie belt in order to do this dress. All right. So those are the modifications that I did for this pattern. Let's talk about, did it look like the photos in the drawing on the pattern envelope? No, <laughs> this is the second time that I am actually saying no for battle of the shirt dress. And the reason why is if you look at this pattern, new look 6180 and the dress that I have on, it does not look the same. The only thing that looks the same is if you look at the bodice without the sleeves. Yeah, it looks exactly the same. If you do not look at the sleeves, if you do not look at the little uh, tie belt that I have, then yes, it would look the same. However, like I said in previous videos for Battle of the Shirt Dress, I want to make it hard for me to choose which one I like the most, which one that was okay. I like them all so far. So it's going to be really, really hard for me to determine which one I like. And I still have one more dress to go. All right. So yes, it looks, no, it does not look like the drawing on the pattern envelope. All right. Let's talk about, are the instructions easy to follow? Yes, the instructions are easy to follow. I did not have any hiccup with the instruction, but like I said, this is an older pattern. So my instructions look a little brownish instead of that gray look on the instructions, but I'm fine with that. It doesn't matter. As long as I can read it, I can achieve it. All right. So let's talk about likes and dislikes. Did I have any dislikes first? Um, I don't have any dislikes per se, other than I just wish the pocket pattern pieces was a little bit bigger, but that's not necessarily a dislike because you could take pocket pattern pieces from other patterns that you like, which is what I did. Um, but other than that, the tie belt needs to be a little longer, but I don't have any dislikes for this pattern, to be honest. Um, the only thing that I can say was it took me off because I thought this was a straight button down shirt dress because it says that it's a shirt dress but it only has four buttons which is a like instead of a dislike i like the fact that i did not have to do tons of buttons or anything it's four buttons 
and you're good to go. The skirt area reminds me of just your basic elastic skirt that you do not have to put any buttons on it or anything. So the skirt section came together so fast I could do it with my eyes closed, okay? Um, the elastic, I wish that the elastic was a little bit more than a fourth of an inch. Now I use three eighths of an inch instead of a fourth of an inch because that's what I had in my stash. But I kind of wish that for the elastic, it was, you know, a half an inch elastic around that casing. But you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. So, but other than that, it's not a dislike or whatever for this pattern. So let's go ahead and move into first time experiences. Did I have any first time experiences? No. Um, I have done several shirt dress, I have done buttons, I have done collars, neck bands. The only thing that I could say is, like I said before, the way that they want you to put on the facing right here is different than what you would do for a shirt dress. However, I did a shirt that was similar to this when I did the top series on how to put the facing in. So it's not a new experience whatsoever. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about what I sew this again. No. I would not sew this pattern again because for this pattern, I think I'm one and done. It did not frustrate me or anything. It's just, it's a good pattern to do, but I would have to hack it again. So to keep me from having to hack it, because like I said, if you remember me doing Butterick 6702, I had to hack that pattern, even though it's a great pattern, and Talisha from Creativity by T just did this pattern too, and you guys are over the moon for her as well. Um, but like I said, I don't wanna have to do so many hacks every time I do a pattern, so I don't think I would do this again, but this would be one that would stay in my you know, pattern stash just in case I decide to, all right? <laughs> Let's talk about what I recommend this pattern to others. If you can find this pattern, by all means, yes, do this pattern, do a couple of hacks or whatever. You can sew it as is. Many people have done that, but I just wanted to hack it, all right? Um, and what is my pattern rating? So for this pattern, I'm gonna stamp this a four out of five, not because I hate the pattern whatsoever. I don't, I like the pattern. It's just a couple of things that I think could have been better for this pattern. However, I still like the pattern. Now, one thing that I will mention about this, pat this pattern, it's, not, it's this pattern for the sleeve, but on the sleeves, if you notice, I contrast it and use the red on the inside instead of a white or a tan or a brown or anything. The red set it off because you know, <clears throat> I want it to bring out the little leaves right here, which are red in the fabric. So that's why I use red on the inside lining um, for that. But other than that, that is all for this pattern review. I hope you enjoyed this dress, dress number three for Battle of the Shirt Dress. Now that we talked about the Battle of the Shirt Dress, let's go, and the pattern review, let's go ahead and get into my hashtag me May, May Roundup. All right, so I have my notes because 30 days of um, putting on clothes every day for 30 days to take photos was a lot. I will change how I do that if I do this next year, okay? So I'm, I, it's gonna be really, really quick with a lot of pictures of what I did or whatever for um, Me, Mate, Me, all right? So I kicked it off May 1st with a collaboration from the lovely Deborah from The Sewing Nook. And what I created was a two piece set for hashtag so much colors utilizing simplicity 8605 for the shorts. And I purchased the fabric from Joann's. I also had, you know, I also did a review for that as well. And the top was simplicity 8891. So I love that um, pairing that I did. And because it was a new, my goal for me made me was to make one new outfit each week. And I was successful in doing that, which I will cover everything that I sew for May in my May Sewing Makes Roundup. So then over to day number two. So day number two, I pulled out my raglan sleeve dress that I made um, back in February, pink, because for week number one, I was going with a pink theme, only because when I did hashtag so much color with Deborah from the Sewing Nook, the color was pink, so I just went on into pink the next day sewing that raglan sleeve dress. 
From there, I decided to stay on the topic of pink. And so, uh, well, I didn't sew it, but it's from the beginning of the year. I put, put on my colorful dress that I made for Valentine's Day. And that dress was utilizing Butterick 6809. I love it, okay? I still love it to this day. I love that dress. So I was still on a pink kick. So by that time, I said, you know, we are gonna transfer from pink to black because I was transitioning into the next hashtag so much color, which was with Delilah, which I will get to here shortly. So for number four, Day number four, May 4th was May 4th, uh, May the 4th be with you, which was Star Wars shirts that I did for the entire family. And it was amazing. I did a black shirt and I love that shirt. I have wore it twice since making it. So then over to day number five, I did, oh, oh. So day number five, I pulled out a shirt dress. And the shirt dress was New Look 6651 for that. I did a sew along for it. So I will go ahead and put, if there's any sew alongs for any of the patterns that I wore, I will definitely put it in the description box below. Over to day number six, after the shirt dress, I was still kind of on a shirt dress kick. So I pulled out this red, white, and uh, black cardigan and I made it a couple of years ago <laughs> in an Ankara print, and that pattern was Simplicity 8891. I love that pattern, so I have done every view on that pattern thus far. All right, so moving over to day number seven, I uh, was still on like a black, white, and red kick, so I pulled out my self-drafted dress that my husband loved, it's one of my husband's favorite make one of them I, he has a couple of them but this is one that he will always say is his favorite dress that i made not because it's self-drafted but he likes the style of the dress um and it's self-drafted and then from there i moved over to day number eight which was the mother's day dress i mean the mother's day romper it was supposed to be a dress and the dress that i was supposed to sew up was simplicity 8123 which was a mimi g pattern and to be honest, I just got lazy and didn't want to sew a dress. So I went with a romper. Now, let me say this. I wish I would have went with a dress instead of the romper, even though the romper is great and cute. However, I did not like that pattern, which was McCall 7115. So for week number two, that ended the week number one. Into week number two, I went with a blue and yellow theme. So everything in that week was either blue or yellow or a mixture of both colors in the same fabric. So moving over to day number nine, which um, I pulled out a spaghetti strap top that I did a sew along for. That pattern is Simplicity 1366. I paired it with some jeans. Love it, okay? Um, I, have made, I have made things with that fabric so many times, so it's a no brainer. Let's go ahead and move over to day number 10. So for day number 10, I pulled out my birthday suit that I made last year for my birthday. And that pattern was Simplicity 8093 for the uh, jacket and for the pants was my TNT pattern, Simplicity 1165. You guys still love that two-piece set to this day. I love it. I just completely, listen, I'm not gonna even lie, I was working and I knew I needed to uh, take photos. So I ran outside with yellow flip flops on, okay? To pair with it because like I said, I have so many shoes and sometimes I forget what I could pair things with <laughs> until my photographer, my daughter would be like, you remember those shoes? You remember this? Grab this, grab that. Like I'm her child, okay? so. My photography, my photographer be on it, okay? Gosh darn it, okay? All right, so let's move over to day number 11. Day number 11 was a collaboration with Delilah from Simply Delilah for hashtag so much color. The theme was black. So I did new look 6518. That was not the original pattern that I wanted to do. That was basically plan B. <laughs> 
All right, so the original pattern I was supposed to do for that was Simplicity 9454, which was a tiered dress, but you guys know after doing that Easter dress, I didn't want to think about tears. So I switched it a couple of days before it was due. Did it work out perfectly? Plan B has came through so many times this month. So I don't know what to say about that, but that was plan B and it worked out, all right? So let's move over to day number 12. So day number 12, I pulled out an anorak jacket that you guys love. So this pattern is actually a costume pattern and I did not want to make it as a costume. I wanted to make it as a regular jacket. So I made it as a regular jacket and in car print and lined it with just some black cotton fabric and you guys went crazy when I originally posted this fabric way back in January and I just pulled it out of my closet paired it with some black pants and a white shirt and it was still a hit on day number 12. All right, <laughs> let's talk about day number 13. Day number 13, I came out blazing for a few days um, with new Me Made Mix. The first one was dress number six in the dress series, which uh, that pattern was McCall's 8032, I believe. And um, that was a fitted dress. I loved it, I paired it with red heels and it was amazing. What can I say? The only thing is next time I will size it down a little bit more because it does have a little bit more room than I want it, but it is still a great dress. Moving over to day number, what day am, am I on? Day 14? All right, so anyway, I think I'm on day number 14. So day 13, I did the dress. D yes, day number 14, I'm sorry y'all. I got distracted. Day number 14, I came out pulling out a um, bell top from when I did the Disney African Princess Collection. I pulled out the bell top. That pattern was McCall's 8035 as part of the Disney African Princess Collection. Loved it, still love it, still in my closet. You guys know where I'm going with. All right, so moving over to day number 15, that was a collaboration with Tequila. I've been calling her Tequila and she have not corrected me this far, but her name is Tequila. And um, she's at True Love Designs. And our theme was to do peach or orange. So at this point, we're transitioning over to orange items. And then towards that end of the week, I did blue. Um, but, the pattern that I used was McCall's 8197, a baby doll style dress, and I love it, okay? I used the, the fabric is from Joann's and for hashtag so much colors, all the fabric was pretty much from Joann's, okay? So moving over from the 15th to the 16th, I was still on this peach orange theme and I pulled out a mommy and me dress that I made last year with my daughter. She has the same dress. Um, and it's Simplicity 9277, love the dress. Even though originally in the pattern review, I said it makes me look like a church lady <laughs> because it, it reminds me of a choir rope. It doesn't now, I paired it differently and it is still good in my closet, okay? Moving over to day number 17. Now, my husband took these photos, he, took my daughter off photo duty to take photos and it was a hilarious photo shoot because this dress is another dress that he likes which is the tie front dress. That pattern is Simplicity 8981 and I love that dress. You could always pair it with some nude heels and you look so classy, business related. Okay, so he loves that dress. He wants me to make it again in a different color. This man, what can I say? I'm gonna do it in another color at some point in time, all right? Let's move over to day number 18. So day number 18, we have a new make and that was dress number seven in the, so, I'm sorry, dress number seven in the dress series, which was Simplicity 9324. I did it in a plaid, an ice cream plaid where I picked up the fabric from Joann's. I did a pattern review and everything for that. Love it. The only thing that I did not like about that dress, which I already made that change and I closed up the button part of it. I went to the store and 
The top and the bottom button was the only button that was still buttoned. Everything was hanging out. I was in 7-Eleven. No one said anything. I got home and my husband said, I hope you didn't go out the house like that. I was like, like what? I'm thinking I'm cute. Until he said, look in the mirror. <laughs> I look in the mirror and the whole back of my dress is unbuttoned, except for the top and the bottom. I'm just gonna say this. I normally do not wear buttons down the butt area of my dress, but I thought it was cute. And if you do that dress, take caution and make sure your buttons are there and your buttons are closed. All right, I'm just gonna tell you that if you decide to do that dress. All right, moving over to day number 19, I think. I did dress number eight, which was McCall's 8032 or 8034. It was the ruffle sleeves dress. Love it. I did a yellow and blue and car fabric called rain burst. Love it. All right. I still love it. So moving over to day number 20. So this dress right here was the infinity wrap dress. I did not have a lot of time because the sun was going down. It was after work. I ran outside really quickly to take photos before the sun um, went down. And this particular day, I just hurried up and tied the infinity tie, which is super duper long with those ties. Quickly got the photos and we were good to go. All right, so that's day number 20. Let's move into day 21 is I transitioned over to a red, white, and blue towards the last week of um, hashtag me, my, me, me, me. So what I did was I did the flared, I put on the flared skirt because I was gonna run some errands and everything and paired it with the white top and some tennis shoes. Put on a hat and it silked the look. So the flared skirt, it is Butterick 48, I'm sorry, Butterick 4686, but the new pattern is Butterick 6744. Love it, all right? So moving over into the 22nd, it was another collaboration for Hashtag So Much Color. And that collaboration is with Monique Ryan III on Instagram. The theme was to sew red and pink in a garment. You could color block it or you could sew. It could be all one fabric with both of those colors in it. But majority of the fabric had to have those two colors. So anyway, I did uh, McCall's 8209, love it. You guys love it as well. So yeah, that was that. Moving into the 23rd, um, I did, what did I do? Moving over into the 23rd, I did the ruffle dress and that ruffle dress was McCall's 8032. So I'm gonna go back because I thought I did the ruffle dress on the 19th. But what I did on the 18th, I did dress number six, and then I did dress number seven after that, and then the infinity wrap dress. So I do apologize for being out of order and out of sequence. I have my notes now, okay? So day 24. So on day 24, I wore this linen set because I was going to a graduation for some of my daughter's friends that are in elementary, but now transitioning over to the middle school. So I attended a graduation. And instead of me wearing the school colors, red, yellow, and blue, I just decided to wear white. And I'm glad I did because many of us did that, okay? <laughs> we just did not uh, wear the school colors. Plus, because I was transitioning over to red, white, and blue for the last week of hashtag me, mate, may, I decided not to go with the school colors and just wear white. So that's what I did. All right, so day 25. So this dress right here is actually day 25. I put it on again today to do this video only because I did not post the photos or a video for day 25. I did something different simply because the sleeves was not, the sleeves were done, but I needed the dress to hang in order to hem it on day 25. I actually took photos the next day on day 26, um, which is why I did not post this dress on day 25. However, I wore something else on day 25 um, that was me made, but this was originally 
supposed to be for day 25, if that makes sense, all right? Day 26, I pulled out a cardigan and a duster, which was New Look 6514, paired it with some jeans and some flip-flops, some red flip-flops and a hat, and it, we were good to go because I was running some errands that day. <laughs> And on day 25, instead of putting on this uh, dress, I had last day of school stuff to do. So yeah, that's why I wore something different, okay? Day 27, so day 27, I did the So What series, which was project number four, which was a two-piece knit set, and it was blue. Love the navy blue set, okay? I, I, I just love it. <laughs> I just love it. Have a sew along for it if you're interested. It's in the description box below and we'll link onto it, link to it at on the end screen. Day 28 came around and we was all about that red dress. Simplicity 9041, loved it. And listen, I wanna do it as a two piece next time, okay? We'll con I'm still considering it, all right? All right, so moving over to day 29. So day 29, listen. It was hashtag so much colors collaboration with Cherie. Cherie Thomas 30. Cherie came out blazing, you guys, blazing with her outfit. I had to pick myself up off the floor because it was amazing. Now, all the ladies have done amazing things with hashtag so much color. So I do appreciate each and every one of them. Um, Cherie did wonderful as well. So what I created was a jumpsuit. I did a sew along for it. It was McCall's 8119. So you guys could look at that sew along if you are interested. And that theme was to use white, teal, yellow, and pink in your garment. Are you a color block? I just made sure my garment had all the colors in it. <laughs> That's what I did. The original plan for me was to color block and use McCall's 8193, but I looked at Andra Makes video when she did a pattern review and when she said that they want you to sew some shanks, which is hand sewing some buttons on, on the side, and then some tears, I was not feeling that. I hurried up and put the pattern back in my pattern stash, y'all. Nah, mm -mm, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it at that time and only had three, four days to get it done. I had to go with something a little quicker than that, all right? But thank you, Andrea, if you are watching this video. Thank you so much for that pattern review. You saved me some time, girl. Thank you so much, all right? All right, so day 30, which was Monday, and of course, Memorial Day, red, white, and blue. So I pulled out my last year Memorial Day skirt during the summer skirt series, and that skirt is Butterick 5757. Now I posted that on Monday, and many of you are looking for that pattern. Some of the Joann's still have that pattern in the pattern drawer. However, if you are wanting to know um, how you can create that same tier, like I have the red, white, and the blue, I will measure the pattern and put it in the description box below for each tier. And what you can do is get a basic pattern and then just draft out your tiers at seam allowance. Now, what I would do is make your first tier that amount, right? Just the height. You don't need the width. You just need the height of the first tier. Add in a half an inch seam allowance. Second tier, add in a half an inch seam allowance for the bottom. So basically what you're gonna do, the top tier, you do not need to add seam allowance for the top tier. You just need to add seam allowance at the bottom of that first tier. For the second tier, you need to add seam allowance for the top and the bottom. Those are the two that will be uh, attached to each other. And then for that third tier, you need to add seam allowance for the top portion of the third tier. I will draw it out and also put it out, I'm gonna draw it out and put it up on the screen for you so you could be able to see what I'm talking about when I say you need to add seam allowance, all right? All right, so moving on over to yesterday. So yesterday for May 31st, I pulled out hashtag BHM Pattern Designer, which is hosted by so Natita from So Natural Dane. I pulled out the BHM Pattern Designer Challenge that I did last year. 
it was a knit dress and a waterfall jacket. The pattern that I used was McCall 7635. So that was my round up for hashtag me, may, may. I enjoyed me, may, may, but I will reconsider how I do all of my pictures and photos and videos and all of that stuff. I'll probably do it by week next time instead of every single day. So I enjoyed me, may, may. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for hanging with me. I do appreciate it. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, coming back each week and showing me some love. All right. Thank you so much for my new and returning subscribers as well. Well, that's all that I have in this video. Thank you so much for watching and, and until next time, keep sewing. <laughs>